welcome to Japan. This is literally the only beach in the entire country where you can do this, where you can just drive to the sea. And there's no better car for this than the Land Cruiser. I'm still processing, I'm still processing this experience of, of now living here. Look at this. What you see now is 8.1K, 3x2 open gate footage out of the S1R Mark II. Unprocessed, it goes straight in the new, new to me, Blackmagic uh, 12G monitor slash recorder and from there into a Samsung T5 and also got a T7 Shield SSD. Does it overheat? We'll talk about this in detail. But I can already tell you there is a second problem besides overheating that has to do with dropping frames. That's crazy. I'm on eight by one now just to not drop frames. Is that true? Yeah, you got me. <laughs> there are two problems. Overheating and dropping frames. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel and to those of you who are new here. My name is Tim. I'm an ethnographer of Japanese Buddhism, scholar of Japanese religions. And I use my Lumix S1R Mark II as the new A cam. Now in combination with the Blackmagic Video Assist 12G, I chose the 7 inch model. There's also a smaller version, 5 inches, but that one lacks two audio inputs, so I chose the bigger one just for that reason alone. And my first impression is I'm loving it. But there are two things to uh, consider when it comes to recording 8.1K open gate 3x2 footage in B-Raw through this recorder with the S1R Mark II. A. Overheating and second, dropping frames. Yes, instead of just uh, solving the overheating issue with the monitor recorder, which is uh, actually feasible and doable to some extent, um, there is the additional problem of frames being dropped. Dropping frames only occurs in 5 to 1 compression sometimes, and it's really doable. If you choose, however, again, the 3 to 1 compression in constant bitrate, you will get dropped frames within seconds, so it's completely useless. The 8.1K open gate uh, is what comes out of the camera and then inside the recorder, inside the Blackmagic Video Assist, you can set the quality of your recording the same way as it works within a Blackmagic Cinema camera. If you never had one, there are basically different compression rates and standards that you can choose. There's either constant quality or constant bitrate. I always choose constant bitrate and choose a compression ratio of 5 to 1. The lowest lossless compression that you can choose is 3 to 1. However, it's not gonna work. If anyone out there has tested it, has a different solution for that, please let me know. The only solution I guess would be to have a recorder updated with not SSD recording, but CF Express Type B cards, Blackmagic, if you listen, we'd love to have one. But then again, I just bought this recorder, <laughs> so, well. With that said, the 3 to 1 compression is one that I never used before, nor do I plan to do so now. Uh, if you choose 3 to 1 compression, you cannot or basically only uh, record one hour. With 5 to 1, you're already at a recording limit of 104 minutes for 2 terabytes. That's painful enough in my book. <laughs> That's painful enough. If you go further down to a compression of 8 to 1, then you get considerably more time, I think and 12 to 1 is then, you know, more compressed, less detail and so on. Um, for some it's enough. I, I found 5 to 1 to be a perfect kind of balance. Digging deeper into this, I'm new to the Blackmagic monitor recorder, I realized that the problem was maybe the SSD recording and specifically the USB cable connecting the Blackmagic Video Assist and the SSD drive. Again, I use the T7 Shield, which is certified, approved medium to be used for the Blackmagic. Um, so I don't think it's a problem. It's not the SSD, I think it's maybe the cable. I chose different cables and tried different ways, but sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, earlier today, 
I had an audio issue. So this is actually the second time of me recording this. So for one hour, I narrated this uh, overheating test. Um, and the result was that the camera didn't overheat, but the monitor recorder um, dropped frames later into the recording several times. I thought, is it maybe related to heat? Now I start again um, to record this again with proper audio and um, dropped frames at the start of the recording, turned the monitor off and on again, try it again and again. Problem solved itself. Now I don't have drop frames. I cannot conclusively say or tell why or when dropping frames occurs, but for me, it uh, occurs infrequently enough to just go with it. I'm fine with it. It's just a risk that I take. And it's a risk that is easy to mitigate for me because whenever the recording stops on the front of the monitor, you would see that exclamation mark flash and otherwise there's a big tally light. So even uh, when I went out yesterday to film the Land Cruiser at the beach to show you know, the beauty of Japan, um, you know, I was fully aware if the camera was recording or not. So overheating um, is an issue, yes. In room temperatures, indoors, um, with 26, or now we have yeah, 27, up to 29, 30 degrees, that's the threshold. You can basically record 8.1K open gate indoors, um, without good ventilation, continuously, without the camera shutting down. I recorded for an hour without even having an overheating warning. The monitor held up great. The only solution you have to, uh, the only thing you have to think of is probably power, you know, external power to supply all these machines. But overheating was not an issue at all. Um, overheating becomes an issue indoors without direct sunlight hitting the camera. When, like in, at about 30 plus degrees. I had a test in 33 degrees indoors, humid, non-air conditioned room here, and within half an hour, the camera overheated and shut down. So you have half an hour and 33 degrees indoors. This minimizes to only 20 minutes, 25 or 24, when direct sunlight hits the camera. Sweat is literally dripping. <laughs> No overheat warning yet. And we are in 18 minutes, 11 seconds. 18 minutes, we have the warning. We get temperatures up to 35 degrees here in Kanazawa right now in the midday. And as you see on the thermometer, if you place that next to the camera and see what happens as the sun rays and UV hits those devices, the actual temperature is much hotter than what your weather app may suggest. Another YouTuber whose name I forgot, I'll show it here if you find him again, suggests that that actually an umbrella might help in protecting your camera from UV and direct sunshine. And actually, this is something that you see a lot in Japan. People protecting themselves from the sun using umbrellas. It's called higasa. It's not a rain umbrella, but my wife forgot hers today. Let me show you. Here. See, it looks like an umbrella, but it's actually made to... Um, keep sun away from you. So if you have that and then have your camera underneath, that could be a very good solution. I'm a, I have it in my shopping cart but didn't press the buy button yet because I think in some way it's ridiculous. But there are camera umbrellas that have a, a cold shoe mount that you can then put on your camera rig. But with the monitor and the DJI lighter, I'm like a bit at a loss like as to where to put it. Maybe on the tripod or I don't know, maybe on a backpack, <laughs> but it could work, you know, in a pinch, why not? But then again, I'd probably go back to good old GH6 because I will give that an overheating test and just gave up because it just never overheats. 
Oh, sorry, Kana, I better leave it. Basically, what B Word gives you is that uh, adjustment of white balance in post production and tint and those kinds of things. Um, ISO with the Blackmagic camera, in this case, you cannot set the ISO, but you have so much room to you know push the shadows or the highlights and massage apply LUTs but yeah a main reason for me to use it is to have that ability to align shots with each other that's one reason the the other reason to use B-Roy is of course the the ease on the editing machine I use a gaming laptop for my post-production uh, needs and it's the only machine I have and um, I'm struggling with the internal codec recording internally open gate in the Lumix S1 R Mark II even in 6.4k or whatever it is. I'm struggling with this on my editing machine if I have longer clips, too many clips, working too much on them. The result is that you know it's really like it's really slow on my timeline, it slows down my machine and um, it's a concern so far that uh, for my latest project dealing with uh, you know, ethnographic uh, a video about the repair of Buddhist objects that got destroyed in the 2024 January earthquake and tsunami in the Noto Peninsula north of where I live here in Kanazawa. You know, I, I chose spherical lenses for that reason alone because I had no video assist. I had no option to record OpenGate smoothly internally because it's so compressed in a way that my specific setup of computer here cannot really handle it well. So I think it's reasonable to use Blackmagic RAW. For that reason alone, it's just so easy to edit with. Yes, the file sizes are huge, but I, I rather deal with that and then have uh, flexibility in post and a smoother editing experience. Keep in mind that DaVinci Resolve, my editing uh, software of choice, is made by Blackmagic, uh, so you have a a perfect circle when it comes to you know shooting black magic raw and then editing that in resolve it's just ideal internally i recorded and had the camera overheat the other day while in vajima the camera overheated as i was following a restore of buddhist household altars and memorial tablets you know where i live in kanazawa you wouldn't notice or think that there was an earthquake not too long ago but the noto peninsula is pretty remote it's really, really remote. It's one of the most remote areas I've ever been in my life. The nature is beautiful, but yeah, relief is going slowly. So I was out there shooting B-roll and capturing Suzuki-san's, um, you know, emotions and experience of revisiting that, that place and explaining it to me on camera uh, in minute-long recordings on and off between b-roll shots of that of that place and only six minutes into that scenario I realized that my fan wasn't set to fast on the S1R Mark II. So I set the fan to fast and we continued, went to a shrine and talked to a personal local there, a local resident who happily con um, you know, conducted an interview on the camera and yeah seven minutes into recording that the camera shut down right when you have this mm, you say once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> Of course, then it happened and it shut down. But you know, my response was just to say that, please, uh, in, in Japanese, I told him to just hold that thought. I went to the car, grabbed my black magic camera, continued shooting with that one. That was a solution. But of course, if you don't have a second camera, then it's a problem. If you shoot in 30 plus degrees outdoors, don't buy it. But then again, you know, um, which camera is then without problems under those kinds of conditions? I think maybe only the GH6, in my understanding. The S12 would probably also overheat under those in those conditions. I don't know. But yeah, other than that, it's super useful. And with the external recorder, overheating issues are dramatically lower. Just the drop frames to keep an eye on. Other than that, I am extremely happy. Again, all those fires are still usable, even if the camera drops a frame or overheats. Back to my in initial impressions of the monitor. Simply unpacking it, holding it in my hands, doing the firmware update. It feels premium. It feels premium, it looks premium, and it's instant. Booting time, almost non-existent. Menu, like any black magic camera, superior. It's beautiful. And it looks gorgeous. It goes up to, I think, 2,500 nits. 
what can I say? You know, I've been using a monitor in the past with my Blackmagic 4K at the time just to monitor and it's been a bit of a disaster. I have it here. It's the port keys that I had at the time, a couple of years ago I bought this. The port keys, five inch, I think is this. Uh, you would think it's a fine monitor, but it starts with this package, like this box. It's That's one thing. At least it has a box. Blackmagic doesn't come with a box at all. Why? Point for port keys. But the main problem with this port keys monitor for me was that in direct sunlight, in direct sunlight outside in the summer in Japan, it appeared as if the sun rays played piano on the menu. It, it was erratically changing settings as if an invisible hand touched the monitor screen, changing settings, and it got extremely hot and it became unusable. So, yeah, the booting time of this thing, oh my god, waiting, waiting. You want to save battery, turn it off, turn it on again? Nah. Yeah, the Blackmagic uh, product is, is premium. But again, uh, it's premium, but there's still Blackmagic kind of design quirks. I don't want to say false. You know, dropping frames, it is what it is. And you know, this is exactly the point that distinguishes a Blackmagic or Lumix combination here from, say, an Ari Alexa. Reliability is something that comes with an extraordinarily higher price than those consumer products that we are using here. This kind of reliability I don't need, or I mean, it would be nice to have, but I don't need it. If you have any questions about the Lumix S1 R Mark II in combination with the Blackmagic 12 G Video Assist, please let me know. I'm again not doing these crazy tests and full comparisons that other YouTubers do. For a general overview, watch uh, at Prosser's video in combination with the S1 Mark II, lacking the contact that I just just hear about overheating and dropping frames though. Very informative when it comes to how that works with gaining an additional stop through highlight recovery, etc. But yeah, if you have any questions for me, why don't you just drop me a message or, or hit the like button and subscribe. Love you all. Take care. Bye.